Hey guys, today I'm going to be reacting to Madeline Klein's skincare routine. So I'm going to be analyzing the product she uses based on the ingredients, based on a scientific point of view. And I just want to say before we get started that I'm in no way trying to disrespect her if there's any product that I dislike. I'm just looking at this from an unbiased um, scientific point of view. Okay, so let's get started. Tonight we're going to be using eight products, and they are my absolute staples. They're my ride or dies. I'm going to start with baby oil. I feel like this might be controversial, but I find that it's a really easy, cheap way to get rid of makeup on my face. Okay, so baby oil contains mineral oil, which I think the reason she said that this might be controversial is because there are a lot of internet myths about mineral oil. I have a video all about mineral oil. Is it safe? And I also discussed the difference between cosmetic grade mineral oil versus industrial mineral oil. And in short, mineral oil used in cosmetic products undergoes a refining and purification process to remove impurities that would be hazardous to the health. I talk about this at length in my video on mineral oil, so I'll have it linked below for you, but in my view, I think mineral oil is a great ingredient to use to break down your makeup and SPF before going in with a water-based cleanser. And actually, many oil cleansers and a lot of really high-end oil cleansers are mineral oil-based. So this actually is a nice way to start out taking off the makeup. The only thing I would say, just based on personal preference, is that this is not going to have any surfactants, so it's not going to wash off the skin as easily. So whenever you get an oil-based cleanser, it's typically going to have surfactants in it, and that's going to allow oil and water to mix so that it, the product will effectively rinse off your skin. So you might not like the feeling on your skin that this leaves behind. Certainly because this doesn't contain surfactants, it's not going to just rinse off with water. So there is going to be that oil and makeup residue kind of left behind. But as long as she goes in with a water-based cleanser, that's perfectly fine. Um, and if you are looking for um, oil-based cleansers with surfactants. The one that I'll be trying out soon from The Ordinary is their Squalane Cleanser. Um, I'll be trying that out and reviewing it for you soon, but that would be an example of an oil-based cleanser that has a surfactant in it. One also that you can get very inexpensive at the drugstore is from Simple, the Simple Hydrating Oil Cleanser. It has grapeseed oil, which actually has been shown to scavenge free radicals. But yeah, I think using mineral oil to remove your makeup and SPF is perfectly fine, um, assuming that you go in with a water-based cleanser afterwards. It smells really good. I use shea and cocoa butter okay so i did look up this particular one that has shea and cocoa butter however it does have fragrance i've talked about fragrance before a lot on my channel i'm okay with it being in a wash off form so because it has fragrance i would say it's even more important to go in with a water-based cleanser afterwards to ensure that the fragrance is also washed off the skin and also i love shea butter Shea butter is very moisturizing. It's actually been shown to treat eczema just as effectively as ceramides, which are more expensive ingredients. So yeah, I think that this is a good product. It does have fragrance, but again, as long as she goes in with a cleanser afterwards, it's fine. I have struggled in the past a lot with cystic acne. Um, so I do go see a dermatologist um, and y'all will see in my next step I, w I use um, a face wash that has 10% benzoyl peroxide um, and that in conjunction with um, the facial cream I use during the day is really really good at deep cleansing pores. So after that I'm gonna use my favorite cleanser ever is Neutrogena Rapid Clear for stubborn acne. It's 10% benzoyl peroxide. Okay, great. So she is going in with a cleanser to effectively remove the mineral oil. And this is a 10% benzoyl peroxide wash. Benzoyl peroxide is very effective at treating acne. It actually has the longest standing track record in treating acne and it is recommended by dermatologists worldwide. So this is an antibacterial agent. So it actually inhibits the growth of bacteria on the skin, specifically the bacteria that resides in the oil glands that 
cause acne. What's great about benzoyl peroxide for treating acne is that this uh, bacteria that leads to acne does not develop resistance against benzoyl peroxide. So for example, when you're using an antibiotic, a concern is often the bacteria building up resistance. However, you do not have to worry about bacteria building resistance to benzoyl peroxide. Um, it's also anti-inflammatory and reduces free radicals, which are reactive oxygen species that cause damage to the skin. However, benzoyl peroxide is a keratolytic, meaning that it does peel the top layer of your skin. So it's really important to note that the concentration of benzoyl peroxide is actually independent of its ability to kill the bacteria. So that means that you can use 10% benzoyl peroxide, or 2% benzoyl peroxide and it still will effectively kill the bacteria that causes acne. So um, at 10%, um, obviously it's working well for her. Her skin looks beautiful, but for some people with sensitive skin, the 10% could potentially be irritating. Um, so I would say especially if you haven't tried benzoyl peroxide before and you are struggling with acne and you want to, want to incorporate it into your skincare routine, of course, talk to your dermatologist and go with their recommendation, but, but for me personally, I would choose to go with a lower percentage, um, probably uh, about 2%, um, because again, even it doesn't matter whether it's at 2%, 10%, 20%, it still is just as effective at killing the bacteria. So um, again, the one she's using here is 10%, but you can definitely use a, a lower percentage which is going to have less of a risk of causing irritation and it still will kill the bacteria that causes acne. But overall, I think this is a great product and I'm glad that she found something that has worked for her. Um, what I like about it the most is that it tingles when it's on your skin so it feels like it's really working. And also, I just, I like the smell. It's kind of tea tree oil, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so it does contain fragrance. So that is another thing, you know, Again, I'm much more lenient with fragrance and wash off formulas, but because it has the active ingredient benzoyl peroxide, it leads to a higher risk of irritation because it have, has fragrance, but again, you are rinsing it off. If you want a fragrance-free one, Panoxyl, um, the Panoxyl Acne Wash is also, a you can get it 10%. Um, I'll have to look to see if you can get it in a lower percentage, but I know that they do have a 10% um, acne wash that is fragrance free if you're looking for a fragrance free option. Oh, it's rubbing this all over. Uh, for about a minute. And I just really want to make sure that I've gotten most of the baby oil off. Um, you shouldn't um, use too much baby oil, just enough to make sure like you're. you're kind of just getting everything off. It doesn't take much. I... Yeah, that is a good point. With the mineral oil, you just need a tiny amount, just like a drop or two, and that will effectively remove your eye makeup, your SPF face makeup. My holy grail products. Um, they're, they're the ones that I save up for and splurge on. They are SkinCeuticals. The first one is the CE Ferulic Serum. Okay, so the CE Ferulic Serum has 15% L-ascorbic acid, um, which is a component of vitamin C widely used in skincare. It's the most well-studied component of vitamin C that's used in skincare. Um, but this is $166. Again, she said that this is what she saves up to splurge on. Um, this is just my opinion. I personally wouldn't spend that much on a vitamin C serum because a problem with vitamin C is that it's not very stable and you know there have been studies showing that L-ascorbic acid along with ferulic acid and vitamin E it has been shown that having those two ingredients along with it helps stabilize it however it still it still suffers from not being stable that's just a problem with vitamin C derivatives, L-ascorbic acid, um, it's just not very stable. So that's why I would not personally spend $166 on it. She seems to really love this and it works well for her and that's totally fine. But if you're someone looking into trying vitamin C, I just personally wouldn't recommend spending that much on it since we know that stability is an issue with vitamin C. I personally don't use vitamin C. I'm planning to review the one from The Ordinary 
the L-ascorbic acid powder. It's out of stock currently, but when it gets back in stock, I am planning to review that. However, I did find one from the brand called Timeless, and it's a 20% vitamin C and E plus ferulic acid serum, and it seems very similar to this one. It's only $25, so that's a pretty massive difference in cost. So again, I have not personally used this, so I cannot attest to how well this works for the skin, but if I were going to spend money on a vitamin C serum, I would definitely choose this less expensive alternative because it still has the stabilizing uh, ferulic acid and it's much, much less expensive. And then the second one is the Triple Lipid Restore 242. Okay, so the Triple Lipid Restore, it's also very expensive. Again, that's totally fine that she loves it and that works for her, but I think there are much more affordable options for moisturizers that are going to have the same benefits. But the main thing I'm seeing that concerns me with this one, it contains a lot of essential oils. Um, not just one or two, it contains lavender oil, rosemary oil, peppermint oil, linalool. So it does contain quite a few essential oils and I do worry for sensitive skin that that could be irritating. Again, it's obviously working for her, I just wanted to let you guys know um, about that. Um, but I would say that just looking at the ingredients, an alternative that would be about half the price, and I just started using it, but I'm absolutely loving it so far. I'm going to do a review soon. It's the Biosance Squalane Probiotic Gel Moisturizer. It has very similar ingredients. It's going to have the ceramides, just like this moisturizer she's using. So it's actually less than half the price of that. So um, it's much more affordable. One that's even more affordable, uh, the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. That is great, a um, great moisturizer for the face and body, and it's even less expensive. It's only $36, so there are a few options for you. And if you're looking for something from the drugstore, the um, CeraVe products are excellent. The CeraVe moisturizer in the tub um, would even be less than all the other recommendations I have, and it has ceramides, so... There are some less expensive options for you out there, certainly. Triple lipids. It's kind of, the triple lipid smells really nice. It's kind of, I don't know, it smells like yes, it. Because it has a lot of essential oils in it, which again, it's fine. I'm glad that it works well for her, but just be aware if you have sensitive skin, all those essential oils could potentially be irritating for you. And I personally wouldn't use it. It's a Mario Badescu facial spray with aloe. Okay, so I looked up this facial spray. Um, I like that it has green tea extract. I've talked about green tea on my channel before. I love green tea. It It's very soothing for the skin. It can help reduce redness and pore size. And it has an antioxidant called EGCG. However, it contains fragrance. And you guys know I don't like fragrance, especially in leave-on products. The skin looks beautiful and it's working well for her, but I personally would not recommend using this since it has fragrance and you're going to be leaving it on your skin because fragrance can be sensitizing and also co-sensitizing, meaning that you can become sensitized to other ingredients that you normally wouldn't be sensitive to. And also, I would have, if you're going to use a facial mist, this is just would be my recommendation, I would put it on before your moisturizer. The reason I would do this is that the moisturizer contains humectants and humectants are going to hold on to water and prevent transepidermal water loss. So it's going to prevent water loss from the outermost layer of your skin and so it makes more sense I think to use a facial spray before putting on your moisturizer because that's going to lock in the moisture. Because that moisturizer she used had a lot of lipids and fats, you know, I just feel like the, a water-based spray like that is not really going to do much once you already have um, a lipid-based moisturizer on like this. So that would just be my suggestion. Um, I think that it would work better to apply the mist first. I don't think it's necessary to use a facial mist, honestly. 
Um, honestly, I think just applying your moisturizer to damp skin or I've talked about this before, but I'll mention it again here briefly. The thing that's really made a huge difference in my skin, and I learned this from Dr. Dre, is when your skin is still damp, apply a humectant serum, like a hyaluronic acid serum. There's one from Neutrogena that's very affordable. I'll have it linked below for you. Um, but you apply that and then apply a more occlusive moisturizer over top. So for example, a moisturizer that contains shea butter or dimethicone in order to lock in the moisture. So that would sort of be my suggestion for you. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to let you know that that's how, I just wanted to let you know about that because I think that it's a very effective way to moisturize your skin. After that, I use, I get it from Target, but I use DHC eyelash tonic eyelashes and my eyebrows. So this is $14 and I'm honestly fine with this. It's It has a lot of moisturizing ingredients to help condition the lashes. I personally feel fine with the ingredients. I can't guarantee that you wouldn't have any sensitivity around the eye with, with these ingredients. But for example, like the willow bark extract, you know, some people potentially could have sensitivity around the eye with that. I just can't say for sure how each person would react to the ingredients. There are no fragrances or essential oils, so I like that. And overall, I think it has very moisturizing and nourishing ingredients, so I do like what I'm seeing. For lips, this is my secret um, for not having chapped lips almost ever. Okay, so the bag balm is great to use for the lips. It has petrolatum and lanolin, which are very, um, petrolatum is very occlusive. Um, it's going to really lock in the moisture and prevent chapped lips. So I might have to try this soon. Okay, so I really enjoyed doing this. I think she's absolutely beautiful and has beautiful skin. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it was helpful to you. Please, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and ring the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. Comment below letting me know what you thought about the skincare routine and if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of?